Our playoff march was stalled as the Leafs lost 4-1 to to the Preds. Okay, today Brian Burke uh, donated a horse to the Metro Toronto Police Force and Leaf fans are wondering whether or not this horse can suit up for the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. Come on, guys, be serious about this. Jeez. Anyways, um, in regards to the guys singing the national anthems, that six-wire group, please do a better job at rehearsing because that was just terrible. They didn't even do a good job with uh, the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, wow. But anyways, uh, the first period, the Leafs worked hard against the Nashville Predators and got a lot of shots on Pekka Rene, but, uh, well, he's not the... Some people think he's the best goalie in the NHL, only because James Reimer is hurt at the moment. So, <laughs> But uh, anyways, on the National Predators' first shot, Erat scores, and it's a one nothing Predators lead uh, thanks to some poor decision-making by Carl Gunnarsson. Oof. And uh, they pretty much kept the lead throughout the first period. There's no penalties, but in the second period, Fratton is penalized, but that's okay. The Leafs were able to kill off that penalty, and Scrivens makes a big save as Martin Erat takes the puck into the into behind the Leafs net. Uh, didn't catch the two players who were with him, but he passes to the player on Scrivens' left side, and he passes to the player on Scrivens' right side, and Scrivens stayed with them and made a terrific save. Hopefully, this will be another one of these highlight or honor roll candidates on TSN later tonight. But uh, Scrivens also makes a save, but the puck did. Uh, draggle through his legs and Luke Shane was there to stop the puck from going over the line and the score remains one nothing for the Predators. And then Hillen is penalized and uh, the Leafs were good on the power play but when the Predators got it out the Leafs were taking the puck back in. Joffrey Lupul and Tyler Bolzak made a play to uh, John Michael Lyles as they were getting off the ice. I can't remember which of those two passed in the puck but uh, Lyles is in on Pecorine and scores. And the game is tied at one. <laughs> I mean, wow, they just got off the ice and already Lupul and Bolzak get an assist on Lyles' goal. And that's his third goal of the season. And two of those three goals were on the power play. <laughs> well, maybe there's some life in the least special teams after all. But uh, later, Tyler Bozak... Uh, knocks Fisher into the net of the Leafs and that somewhat distracts Ben Scrivens a little bit because by the time he realized that Sutter had the puck and shot it pa he shot it past him ah, and it's a 2-1 Predators lead. <sighs> Way to go Tyler Bozak and then he gets a penalty after that but he does make up for his mistakes by partly saving a goal and in the third period on a a two-on-one breakaway courtesy of Luke Shen uh, with Jake Gardner going back trying to stop Shea Weber and Mark e or Martin Erat on the rush. Erat scores and I gotta admit I'm a little puzzled about this goal. I mean Weber had the puck. He passes to Erat. I mean because Scrivens made a great save earlier why the heck was he not able to stop Erat from scoring? Because now it's a 3-1 Predators lead. And then Jordan Tutu gets penalized. <laughs> I love saying his name like that. But anyways, the Leafs were not able to capitalize on that power play. and uh, But that, mainly because they only had a minute on the power play. Because Lupo got penalized for slashing. And it's a 4-on-4 four -four opportunity. Uh, nothing really happened for either teams. Uh, then Rose Hill and McGratton got into a fight and... The only thing I got to say about this fight is I hope that the, the guys at the Air Canada Center can play some fighting music when something like this happens there because, wow, that's a... Because when the Leafs get into a fight at home, the nothing happens except the fight. So, but uh, anyway, the fight was undecided. Now, the Leafs pull Scrivens and uh, the Predators have a breakaway opportunity and Smith thinks he scores. Guess what? <laughs> it, was, it was on the roof. <laughs> so, the goal horn's going off. They're celebrating and the referee says There's no, it didn't go in. <laughs> it 
It was kind of like that incident a few years ago in the Edmonton Dallas game where Dallas was up by one, Edmonton pulls a goalie, and that Dallas player couldn't score on an open net. <laughs> That was costly, uh, except uh, the Leafs were down by two goals and not one. But anyway, uh, Matt Halderchuk uh, corrects things by scoring on an empty net. And, well, at least I think it was Halderchuk. I was too upset to even notice. But anyways, the Leafs lose 4-1. to one. We're stuck in sixth place. Uh, mostly because a lot of our key forward players, uh, Grabowski and MacArthur, are hurt. And now Lombardi and Mike Homoseric are hurt too. Which makes me wonder what the heck the Leafs are going to do to remedy this situation. Now they've got four, five players on the IR. I think Burke needs to trade a draft pick or at least a few draft picks to get some better players because... This, if we go on a losing streak this November, like we did in November last year, this could prove costly, even though um, the Eastern Conference is really tight. I mean, but just because Grabowski and MacArthur were hurt doesn't mean that the Leafs have to stoop to the skill level of the Montreal Canadiens and the Ottawa Senators. Uh, and uh, some people might say the Winnipeg Jets as well. So... Anyways, here's hoping that the Leafs can bounce back against the Washington Capitals. I mean, it's really going to be tough because the Capitals and the Bruins are probably the only two good teams that the Leafs are going to play um, in regards to the teams they have to play for the rest of the month. I mean, they do have Carolina on Sunday, followed by Tampa, Dallas, and Anaheim. Those teams should be easy to beat. So here's hoping that the Leafs can actually go into December with a playoff spot. So, until after um, until after Saturday night's game, go Leafs go!